Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange. Today I'm here with another round of horror reads. This time I'm focusing on books that I received for review, so there's some new releases here, as well as some backlist titles that I've been meaning to get to. I have a good variety here, including a few DNFs. Let's get into the books. First, I want to talk about a horror novella called Crossroads by Laurel Hightower. This is one that I received for review. This follows a woman who is grieving the loss of her son who died in a horrific car accident. Every day she goes to the place that he died and one day by accident she ends up bleeding on that spot and when she does that she believes that she possibly hears the voice of her son and so she becomes obsessed with hearing him again, possibly bringing him back to life or calling to him from beyond and so she begins to make small sacrifices to her own body in order to bring him back. This was one of the books I included on my most anticipated horror books for 2020 and I'm happy to say that it did not disappoint. I am a huge fan of books that involve grief, particularly parent grief, and this one definitely hit all the right marks. I found the main character to be very relatable and I was really invested in her story. I am thankfully someone who has not experienced this kind of grief myself, but I really could imagine it. I really could put myself in her shoes. And I just think that it's the kind of grief that really does lead to obsession, which is what happens here. So this is a book about a downward spiral. You get to see the woman become more and more obsessed and the things that she's willing to do for the sake of hearing her son again, trying to bring him back, and I just loved it. So definitely recommend this one. I definitely want to read more by this author. I was very much impressed. It's the first one I've read by her, and I just thought it was a really solid book. From the premise, this one honestly did remind me a little bit of Suffer the Children by Craig DeLuey because both books involve parents bleeding for their children. However, I'll say that I actually enjoyed this one quite a bit more, so if you like that premise, I would actually recommend going with this book and yeah just a solid one and I'm really excited to see what she does next. I also read a book called Under the Blade by Matt Serafini. This is another one I received for review this time by the author. It follows a woman who was the sole survivor of a massacre that happened at a camp when she was a teenage counselor and so in the first chapter we get to see the events as they were happening and her having to struggle to survive as everyone around her is being cut down and so it's definitely Definitely a very gripping start that really pulls you into the story and then from there we're fast forwarding to the present day where she is of course still struggling with her past and she needs money so she agrees to go back to the camp and revisit her traumatic past. Of course things are not as wrapped up as they are believed to be and so the killer is possibly still on the loose. I really like that the story is told in multiple perspectives so we get the perspective of the villain which is something I love to see in both horror and thriller books. So definitely one of my favorite aspects of this book. I'll also say this is a really good one to read during the summer months because of that camp setting. So I thought that was really enjoyable. It's definitely the kind of book I reach to on a really hot day here. And of course, this book will appeal to those of you that love movies like Friday the 13th and Sleepaway Camp, which no, I still have not watched, but I definitely hear you guys. You talked about this in my recent book haul. So I do know I need to go and actually watch those movies and remedy my horror movie shame. But if you enjoy those kind of films, I definitely recommend checking out this book. It's a perfect summer slasher and was just a lot of fun to read. Next, I want to talk about La Bella Jar by Adrian Ernesto Serapita. This is one that I received in a Nightworms package. And this is actually a collection of poetry, which is not something I read a lot, but I was very excited to read a book by a horror Latinx author because I don't read enough and I'm really trying to find more. This is actually not so much horror. It's inspired inspired by The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, which you can probably guess from the title. And it is one of my favorite modern classics. I just don't really talk about it on my channel because it's not really a genre I typically review, but each poem is supposed to represent a chapter of that book. And I definitely did see those comparisons. So this was an enjoyable one. It was very beautiful and lyrical. And I just don't really feel qualified to review poetry, if I'm honest. If you go into this one expecting horror, you will be disappointed. I would like to see more of the author's horror work because because that would definitely be more of my alley, but overall enjoyable. And again, I would love to see what else this author can do because I thought his writing was spot on and really strong. 
Next, let's talk about The Glare by Margot Harrison. This is one I received via the publicist. And this is a piece of YA horror that follows a girl that grew up in a very remote setting. Her mother really wanted to shield her way from technology, so she never had a cell phone or access to any of the other modern conveniences. However, now that she is a teenager, she is going off to live with her father for a while who lives in a modern city. And so it's a first experience getting to actually have a cell phone and and really get to experience the full modern world. And the horror element comes into the story when the character gets pulled into the dark web where there is a shooter game with real life consequences where people are actually dying. Now in this book, the reason that is called the glare is that she actually refers to cell phones as glare and describes them this way. She is really, really sheltered at the beginning of the book and believes that this technology is very dangerous and her mother has really just scared her so badly. And so when she actually goes to live with her father and gets a cell phone, she is very much turned off by this. And I'll be honest, I actually DNF this book, so this is not a complete review, but just my initial thoughts on this book. I read probably the first 50% of it fully, and then I went on to skim the rest, but I was very, very annoyed by this book because the main character is just very, very naive, and she reads as someone who is very young, and it was very frustrating to see. And also as someone who admittedly is probably more addicted to their phone than they should be, I found this book to be very condescending to those of us that are very much on our phones in the day. And it just felt like the author was really lecturing on the issues around technology, and it just felt like it was just very preachy, and I just got really annoyed by it. I did skim the rest of the book because I wanted to see the horror aspect to it, and unfortunately I was very underwhelmed by it. I don't read a lot of YA, and so I really need to be more cautious picking up or accepting YA books for review because while some of them are fantastic, so many of them just miss the mark for me and leave me really disappointed like this one did. So again, it's not a full review, I did DNF it, but I can't personally recommend this one. I just wanted to report in because I did show it in my book haul recently. And finally, I wanna talk about Venus in the Blind Spot by Genji Ito, which is his newest collection of horror manga. And I've been gushing about him a lot lately, so you know I love the guy. This is technically a new release, but it does include some reprinting of previous stories. It is a collection of horror short stories, so it reads like an anthology where each of the stories are unrelated to the other ones, but I really enjoyed it. The first story I have never read before, and I actually wonder if it is a newer story because because it felt so topical. It's basically a horror story that warns against the dangers of seeing other people and basically rewards those that self-isolate. I really don't want to spoil it, but it felt incredibly timely for this current year, 2020. And so I definitely wonder if it was written more recently. I absolutely loved it. Some of the other stories, like I mentioned, I had read before, but they actually were some of my favorites. So I was really excited to get to check them out. I should mention that I did receive a review copy of this via NetGalley, which means it was a digital review copy. And for those of you that have ever reviewed graphic novels via NetGalley before, it's a really annoying experience. I had to use my computer and there are big watermarks all over the pages. So it's not a very enjoyable experience. So that being said, I'm really excited to hopefully get my own copy of this one because it's definitely a collection I want to reread, I want to own and revisit, but the actual digital experience was really painful. It's definitely one that you want to experience in a proper physical format. But if you're a fan of Genji Ito, definitely one to check out. There's some really good stories in there. People tunneling into mounds. There's a woman that discovers her husband possibly has a sex doll in the attic. There is a really weird chair and all the things you would expect from Genji Ito if you're not familiar with his work. He does a lot of weird horror. He does a lot of body horror. It's gruesome and just like no one else. So highly recommend the collection, highly recommend the author and I just hope you check it out when it's available. So that is it for this round. Let me know what you think of the books I mentioned here. I would love to hear your opinions down below. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I do read a lot of horror as well as thrillers, science fiction, and fantasy. Otherwise, I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.